Welcome to this GearWig video tutorial on arc nodes and channeling. Arc nodes and other models that can channel allow casters to fire spells through them onto their targets. This ability to change the point of origin of a spell is very powerful. It increases the potential range of a caster's spells and allows him to buff his allies and blast his enemies while being safely out of sight. Like most War Machine rules, the rules for channeling spells are well written and precise, but complicated and at times quirky. Let's break down the rules for channeling spells starting with the basics and then moving on to some of the weirder examples. Let's start by defining the terms channeler and arc node. A channeler is a model that a caster can use to channel spells through, using all the channeler rules as we'll get to shortly. An arc node is an advantage that some warjacks have. When a warjack has the arc node advantage, then it becomes a channeler. So, all warjacks with an arc node are channelers, but not all channelers have arc nodes. This lancer here has the arc node advantage. Thus, its controller, and only its controller, Nemo, can use it as a channeler. He can channel spells through it. This gallows grove is, of course, not a warjack. It is a solo available to the Circle of Orboros army. Its special rules allow it to be a channeler. Any friendly warlock can use it to channel spells, and it follows all the other rules for channeling, just like the Lancer does. A warjack with an arc node will have its arc node represented on its damage grid by the letter A. When all the damage boxes with the letter A in them are marked off, the arc node no longer functions, and that model can no longer be a channeler. Before we cover the specifics of spell channeling, it'd be best to review how targeting works. When an ability, spell, or an attack requires a target, the targeted model must be within line of sight of the front arc of the point of origin of the ability, spell, or attack. It also must be within range of the point of origin. If the target is within line of sight and range of the point of origin, then the ability, spell, or attack is resolved normally moving on to rolling attack rolls, applying buffs, or whatever that ability requires you to do. Normally, the model casting the spell or making the attack is also the point of origin of that spell or attack. So that model will require line of sight from it to its target, and then it goes on to cast the spell or whatever. When a model channels a spell through a channeler, it splits these requirements up. The channeler becomes the point of origin of the spell. So the player has to measure line of sight from the channeler to make sure the channeler can see the target, and then measure range from the channeler to make sure the target is within range. If these conditions are met, then the caster, the model that is casting the spell, resolves the spell like normal. The channeling model is only a passive proxy for the spell. It only changes the point of origin. The spell still takes place during the caster's activation and still uses the caster's focus or fury. The caster can spend his own focus or fury to boost as normal, but cannot use focus allocated to his channeler. He just casts the spell like normal using his own focus. A caster can only channel a spell through a channeler if that channeling model is in his control area. A caster cannot channel spells whose range is control or self. A caster cannot channel a spell through a channeler that has been knocked down, but can channel through one that is stationary. And, in much the same way that a caster cannot target himself with an offensive spell, a caster cannot channel an offensive spell through a channeler that also targets that channeler. Let's look at some quick examples on our board here. Nemo here is hiding behind this obstruction, safe and out of sight. His lancer here has an arc node and that makes him a channeler. He is in Nemo's large control area, so Nemo can channel spells through him. When he does so, the Lancer becomes the point of origin. Normally, if Nemo were just casting a spell himself, he'd have to target the model himself. Since he is hiding behind this obstruction, he can't draw a line of sight to any enemy models and wouldn't be able to target him with spells. Now that he's channeling through the Lancer, we can draw a line of sight and range from that Lancer. If Nemo were looking to channel a Chain Lightning, he could target this Wolf of Orboros, directly in front of the Lancer. He's clearly in his front arc and within the 10-inch range. 
this wolf is as well, and even this tree on the far edge of his front arc is in range. He cannot target the wolf at the bottom of the screen with his chain lightning, even if he channels it through the lancer, because he is not in the lancer's front arc, and thus not in his line of sight. The lancer can't see Mosar either. Mosar is hiding behind a forest, and we can't draw a line of sight through a forest. When Nemo casts his spell, he can spend any focus on himself to cast or boost it, but he cannot spend the one focus he allocated to the lancer. He just uses his own focus like normal. He also can't channel a chain lightning through the lancer that targets the lancer, perhaps hoping to bounce it off and have it chained down to the Wolf of Orbros along the bottom. When you channel an offensive spell through a channeling model, you can't also target that model. If Nemo wanted to cast Deflection, a buff spell that affects his entire control area and provides an armor bonus for his warriors, he could not channel it through the Lancer. You cannot channel spells whose target is Control. Lastly, a channeling model cannot be used to channel a spell if that model is being engaged in melee. In this scenario, Nemo would be able to use his Lancer as a channeler. He's in his control area, his arc node is functional, and he is not being engaged in melee. Note that it's okay for the Lancer to be in melee and still be used as a channeling model. He just can't be engaged by an enemy model. He can still be a functioning channeler if he is engaging a model, as long as he's not being engaged in return. So if the Lancer spent its activation walking toward this tree like this, he could still be used as an arc node. With his reach spear, he has a two inch melee range. He's engaging both the tree and the blood tracker. But the Gallows Grove has no melee weapon, so it can't engage anyone. So the Lancer is not being engaged by the Gallows Grove. The blood tracker here doesn't have reach, so she can't engage the Lancer either. After making this full advance, the Lancer could bonk the tree with his shield and poke the blood tracker with his spear, making the most of his two initial attacks, while still being able to be used as a channeler. The Gallows Grove is a channeler as well, but Mosar here can't use him to channel spells right now because he is being engaged by the Lancer, who has a 2-inch melee range. Happily, the Gallows Grove has the ability to teleport 5 inches during its activation. If it spent its turn to pop down here, then it would no longer be engaged by any enemy models. Now Mosar can use it to channel his spells and even target Nemo. While the basic rules for spell channeling are pretty simple, it can start to get complicated when the caster, the channeler, and the target all have different special rules. When things get tricky, it's best to remember that the channeling model only counts as the point of origin. The point of origin is only used to determine line of sight and range. If the channeling model of a spell has special rules, they only apply if the special rules affect the point of origin of a spell, the determining of line of sight or range. When resolving any aspect of a spell that does not involve determining line of sight or range, like for instance rolling an attack roll, then use the casting model special rules. Don't use channeler special rules that don't pertain to drawing line of sight or measuring range. Let's look at some examples here. Gorman DeWolf has stealth, and stealth reads, a magical or ranged attack targeting a model with stealth automatically misses if its point of origin is more than 5 inches away. This is easy enough to figure out since the special rule specifically refers to points of origin. If we channeled a spell through our gallows grove here at Gorman to Wolf, it would automatically miss because the tree is more than 5 inches away. If it had teleported closer, then we could get through his stealth. Now let's take into consideration our caster, Mosar's, Eyeless Sight ability. Eyeless Sight does four things. It allows you to ignore cloud effects when determining line of sight. It allows you to ignore forests when determining line of sight. It ignores stealth, and it ignores concealment. If Mosar here were to channel a spell through the Gallows Grove, the Gallows Grove would become the point of origin. We would use it to determine line of sight. Thus, the two aspects of the Eyeless Sight rule that involve line of sight, the ability to ignore forests and clouds, would not be used in this case, because the tree does not have eyeless sight, 
and we only use the tree special rules that have to do with line of sight. Even though Mosar normally can ignore forests and clouds, when he channels through the tree, the tree becomes the point of origin, and we use its special rules pertaining to line of sight and range. Eye of Sight also allows Mosar to ignore concealment and stealth. These two abilities affect his attack roll. Stealth causes his attack roll to automatically miss if the model is more than five inches away from his point of origin, and concealment would give the target a defensive bonus against his attack roll. Both of these special rules affect attack rolls, so we look to the caster when he casts a spell and apply his special rules. So this aspect of Isla's Sight, the ability to ignore stealth and ignore concealment, do apply even when he channels through a tree. We only use the tree special rules when determining line of sight and measuring range. So looking back at Gorman here who has stealth, if our caster Mosar channeled a spell through the tree, then Mosar would ignore the stealth special ability. His attack would not automatically miss. He'd be able to roll an attack roll like normal and ignore the stealth, even though the tree is more than five inches away. Mosar has a special rule that ignores stealth and we apply it here because he is the caster. Now let's look at these Black 13th members. They have a special ability called Prowl that gives them stealth when they are standing in a forest. If Mosar were to channel a spell through the Gallows Grove, he could target Lynch here. Lynch is in line of sight of the Gallows Grove. Lynch has stealth thanks to being in a forest, but Mosar can ignore this when he makes his attack roll because Mosar has a special rule that ignores stealth. If instead he attempted to channel a spell from the Gallows Grove to either of the other two members, he would not be able to. He cannot draw line of sight from the Gallows Grove to Watts over here because Watts is on the other side of a forest and he cannot draw line of sight through a forest. Similarly, he could not target Ryan. She has more than three inches of forest between her and the point of origin and the Gallows Grove cannot draw line of sight to her as a result. Even though Mosar has a special rule that allows him to ignore these forests when drawing line of sight, we don't use that special rule for this purpose because he's channeling. We use the tree special rules when drawing line of sight. And the tree does not have any special rules that specifically ignore forests while drawing line of sight. As another example, let's look at one of Nemo's special rules. His arcane accumulator rule allows him to gain a power token every time a model casts a spell in his control area. If the Circle Warlock, Mosar here, were to channel a spell through his Gallows Grove, Nemo would want to check to see if his Arcane Accumulator rule would give him a power token in this situation. The tree is clearly within his control area, but we don't measure to the tree when determining whether or not his Arcane Accumulator rule goes off. Even though the tree is the point of origin of the spell, Mosar is still considered to have cast the spell, and the Arcane Accumulator rule says when a spell is cast, in your control area, you can gain a power token. So Nemo would have to measure all the way down to Mosar to see if he's in his control area. If he's just outside of it, he would not gain the power token, even though the spell's point of origin is clearly within Nemo's control area. Channeling models are potent tools for powerful but fragile casters like Nemo and Mosar here. They extend the range of their offensive spells and allow them to be fully functional even while hiding out of line of sight. Remember that channeling models follow all the normal line of sight rules. For instance, they must use their front arc to draw line of sight. Remember that channeling models can't be used to channel spells when they are being engaged by enemy models. Also be sure to apply a channeler's special rules when determining line of sight and range, but only then. For all other rules, look to the caster. Thank you for watching. For more guides, battle reports, and articles, check out GearWig.com. You can email me at boss at GearWig.com or check out our Facebook or Twitter pages. If you want to help the site, tell a friend and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you.